So the problem ends up being that it's, it's, uh, it's the system. The system doesn't care about these cops. Right. When these cops f uh, end up having PTSD, uh, when these cops are not being trained for de-escalation um, and things of, uh, of that nature, uh, when they're not given proper uh, you know, psychological treatment or anything like that, because that has been suggested. Uh, Captain Ray, uh, who, who I believe is a retired activist at this point, but Captain Ray had mentioned that um, they had talked about uh, providing counseling, mandatory counseling, which which it, it would have to be mandatory, so that you know it's like they don't have to they don't have to confront as much with the hyper masculinity that exists within the police forces right now, um, where there's a lot of like, uh, oh, I can't fucking go to counseling if I if I talk about my feelings, I might lose a ball. So it's like, yeah, you got two, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Talk about your feelings. What's going on? What's going on? Why'd your dad love you? Hmm? You want to talk about how your dad doesn't love you? <laughs> but that is one of the major things, right? Uh, De-escalation training, mandatory counseling. Uh, maybe don't hire veterans. Uh, and if you do hire veterans, offer them some kind of therapy to, to help with their PTSD, decrease the use of guns. All of these things are to help the cops be less violent and actually serve the community, serve the people, right? Protect and serve. That's what's on their fucking car. It's not kill and quit. It's protect and serve. That's what's on their car. But the system is not built to really care about them. The system just kind of lets them get all fucked up. And then when they when it's like, oh, they're all fucked up, they get kicked out. Or or if you're a good cop or if you're somebody that does want to protect and serve, you get you get tossed out of the, the police force pretty darn quick. You get um, you get you get knocked out of there. Uh, I, I know I know two cops that have talked to me about that sort of stuff is they were trying to do their job. They were trying to uh, be a part of the community, help people out, and they were forced to, like, meet their quotas or whatever and, and racially profile certain people, draw their guns, be more aggressive. Uh, and they didn't want to be a part of it. And they had to leave the force or they ha or they were pushed out of the force because they didn't want to be more aggressive, because they didn't want to treat citizens like they were combative enemies. Um, and all of that can change, right? Uh, because if we look at cops as people, then, then we have to change what policing really is to make it not just beneficial for the citizens, but also beneficial for people that want to become cops. Uh, it, you know, it, it shouldn't be a job that that mentally fucks up just cops. It sh it should it should that that is should not be the prerogative of the job. So it's very difficult. So we're, we're kind of having a lot of those discussions, um, and, and and those discussions exist in that middle ground, right? Like it exists in between the the it's all about law and order versus all cops are bastards. Like it exists in this sphere in the middle, and that's very important. That sphere in the middle is very important to consider. Um, and it's, you know, it, it is something that we should be talking about because at the end of the day, these cops are people. They're people just like we are. And on an individual level, uh, yeah, some of them are going to be assholes. Some of them are, are, are going to, you know, take wet willies into the criminal justice system. That's what they're going to do. And those are those are. Those are shitty people. There are some bad apples in everything, right? Which is, that's another one that's used. Uh, oh man, don't judge it by the bad apples. Don't judge it by the bad apples. Well, when the bad apples, when, when, this, when these rotten apples uh, are, uh, you know, that, that rot that's inside of them is spreading through the entire tree, that's a problem. Maybe we should take care of that rot. And if we're going to say that don't judge, don't judge the cops by the rotten apples, uh, why don't we use that same thing for immigrants, for black people, you know, for anybody that we're going to racially profile? And, and when we come out and say, oh, the, the statistics are skewed. This is not what represents the majority of, of this specific group. Uh, and people just do that anyway. They stereotype them anyway. So if we're if we're gonna use the if we're gonna use the uh, you know don't don't judge the whole force by a few rotten apples, uh, then we should apply that to everything. We should apply that to women. We should apply that to to black people, immigrants, every uh, uh, gay people, everything. We should. That's what we should do. But we don't. We have a double standard with it. 
So if we look at it as people, as in, as an individual basis, uh, we can turn policing into being something that should be a force for good. It should be a force to take care of communities, to help each other out, to make sure that laws uh, are treated with the weight that they deserve to be treated. Selling cigarettes should not involve five cops surrounding you and one of them choking you out. Getting, uh, stopping for, for, for a, a, a traffic stop and letting the cop know that you have a registered gun in your car and while you reach over to, to get your, your gun to show it to the police officer, you get shot in the chest, that's unacceptable. You should not do that. That should not be a part of policing. There, there should be a societal trust between the cops, you know? We should be able to look at cops and go, cool, like I feel safe and protected. Not, fuck, there's a cop here. <laughs> I gotta get a bulletproof vest. I gotta get some armor because I don't know what the fuck that cop's gonna do. If the cops are more unstable, if the real cops are more unstable than the victims of the television show Cops, we are living in a backwards fucking society. Hey everyone, uh, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and share it. Uh, these are little clips from a little segment I do called Road Reflections where uh, I go live on my Facebook page uh, and talk about current events, creativity, uh, touring, what's going on uh, in, in my life. So if you enjoy this kind of content, you can go and like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Krish Mohan. Ha ha. Uh, I'm also performing live stand-up comedy all around the country. If you enjoyed these uh, little snippets of sociopolitical commentary, uh, it's very similar to what my stand-up comedy is. You can go to ramennoodlescomedy.com for all of the show dates and tickets. It's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Uh, and if you want to continue supporting DIY, independent, socially conscious comedy content, you can become a patron today. I don't have uh, any corporate sponsors or any small business sponsors just yet. So at the moment, I am people sponsored. I'm sponsored by you guys. So you can go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha and become a patron today starting at only $2 a month. You can check out all the tiers and rewards. Thanks so much, guys, and we'll see you soon.